I was just up at camp last week, and when you talk to people, what they're really focused on is they're focused on longer-term employment and wanting to understand how the dynamics work with respect to longer-term employment, and they're very keen on, on seeing some certainty with respect to that. In order for that to happen, we, we need to get this road built. We need to uh, advance a project in terms of making an investment decision, which would happen after the permitting process has been complete. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. And welcome. Uh, you are listening to, watching the Financial Survival Network. Hey, we're here with uh, Tony Giardini. Uh, Tony, your president, CEO of Trilogy Metals. And don't forget the uh, ticker is on the TSX and the uh, New York Stock Exchange. It's TMQ and you find them at TrilogyMetals.com. So Tony, sponsor update here. We've gotten a lot of questions from a lot of our our viewers, our community. They want to get a brief update on uh, on where the project is at, where uh, where the roads going, and drill programs. I know you've had weather issues, and of course, uh, we've had our health issues across the world, and uh, that always has an impact. But we should probably start with the road because that is the uh, linchpin, the key mover of the entire project. What's happening with the well, uh, with the road? Hi, Kerry. Thanks very much for having us on uh, your program. And as you said, ticker symbol TMQ listed on Toronto, New York, and more information on the company, TrilogyMetal.com. So with regards to the road, the, the first thing that's happening there is that we had approved a budget this year about uh, $13 million uh, to advance the road. And we got off to a bit of a slow start, but uh, things are picking up. And it's really been about engaging with the local communities that are impacted by the road and doing as much uh, on the ground work as we can, given that we have a fairly short time period to do that work. And then it will uh, switch to uh, a more of an office environment where a lot of the detailed engineering process will uh, commence with a view that a much bigger push will happen as far as detailed engineering um, in the 2022 year. I'd be surprised if we spend the, the full $13 million this year, which is um, equally funded by a trilogy, half uh, of that and uh, half by uh, ADA, which is part of the, the state government, an agency of the state government. Uh, but we'll see where things go. But I, I would say that things are progressing um, as, as we hope. And it is really about engagement with the communities and uh, making sure that the message is out about how the road's going to work and, um, and, and answering some of the questions that people have about uh, the nature of the road. Right, and speaking about the nature of the road, so this is a private industrial road. It's not like you're building an extension to the interstate highway system or the Dawson, or the Dawson Highway for that matter. This is uh, exclusively for the use of, of Trilogy and obviously Ambler Metals, uh, but, uh, but there's been some concern about that, I assume. Yeah, so... Uh what happens in Alaska is people look at um, the, the significant road that was built uh, called the Dalton Highway, which was an oil and gas uh, for the oil and gas industry. And it was initially envisioned as a private road and then became a public road. It was funded through the Department of Transportation. And so people look at that and then they look at the Ambler Access Road and they wonder if the same thing's going to happen, but they don't recognize that there's no Department of Transportation money involved in the construction of the Ambler Access Road. That money is going to come from um, the uh, from ADA, which is the state government, and we'll be paying tolls for the use of that road. So when we look at our model, it's more akin to what happened with the Red Dog Mine, where Red Dog built a road from a Red Dog Mine to the coast. They also built a port, and it was for the exclusive use of the Red Dog Mine. And in the case of the Amber Access Road, it will be for the exclusive use of the mining companies that will be operating in that district over time, uh, with uh, Amber Metals being the, the first one because it's got the most advanced project. So the, the key message that we're trying to get out to stakeholders and the communities in particular is that it will be a uh, private industrial use road only, that um, there are benefits to those communities in and around the road in that they should be able to access 
um, supplies and materials that are currently flown in or barged in, uh, hopefully at a lower cost. And we anticipate there'll be other benefits once that road is up and running. So that's part of the important message that Ambler Metals is trying to convey to the communities in and around the Ambler Mining District. Yeah, so they really have nothing to lose and everything to gain from the road. So much of your costs of all goods, regardless where you are, are transportation related. And in this case, because uh, you have the ability to really cut down the cost of transportation, it's going to be a huge benefit for the local communities. Well, we, we, we believe so. I mean, we see the benefit, obviously, being uh, multifaceted. We see the benefit as employment in the district, which is, you know, very um, difficult to come by right now. So we see that as a huge opportunity. We see the tax revenues that will ultimately flow into the um, Northwest Arctic Borough and the part of the state. We see training opportunities, hopefully some procurement opportunities in time. And then, of course, as you said, we see the benefit of a road, which could bring down the cost of rain. As you can imagine, in some of these remote communities where they're relying on diesel fuel, just think about how expensive it would be to helicopter in diesel fuel and uh, materials like that. And so where uh, it really does impact the cost of living in a significant way. So, um, so it's really about making sure that that message is clearly communicated and uh, being prepared to listen and very um, and uh, respectfully answer any of the questions that are coming up from uh, the Native communities in and around the Anglomania District. And you're already employing a number of local residents. Uh, I think you said uh, around uh, two-thirds of the people working on the uh, project now are, uh, are local residents. That's right. Uh, you no, know, there's about 70 people at camp right now. We have some people come in and out, but I would say about... Uh, you know, uh, two thirds, seventy percent of those are, are are locals. And some of them are just regional hires for the summer. Obviously, that will change once we make an investment decision. Uh, I was just up at camp last week, and when you talk to people, what they're really focused on is they're focused on longer term employment and wanting to understand how the dynamics work with respect to longer term employment, and they're very keen on on seeing some certainty with respect to that. In order for that to happen, we, we need to get this road built. We need to uh, advance a project in terms of making an investment decision, which would happen after the permitting process has been complete. So it's, it's really about making sure that people understand that we're at the beginning of the process in some regards in terms of advancing the project. But because uh, we've got such a robust first project in Arctic, we think there's lots of opportunities to um, to see that built. So, uh, so it's really exciting. As, as, as things are going. And, um, you know, I, I think, Carrie, as you can appreciate, community is really the key and making sure that getting our message out to the Native communities is very important in terms of the, the, the advance in the project. And you had a, uh, a VIP visitor at the uh, site recently, um, the governor of Alaska, very supportive. Yeah, so the, the governor of Alaska, uh, Governor Dunleavy uh, came to our site. There's a press release from the governor's office detailing that visit. In addition to the governor, um, the chair of uh, Nana Corporation, which is a native corporation that effectively is our partner in the district, Linda Lee was, was also in attendance, as were other representatives from Nana. And uh, I think it's just um, important that people understand that we do have that commitment level from uh, the state of Alaska, the state recognizes how important uh, it is to see the development of the road happen and hopefully see uh, mineral property or mineral projects developed in the district. And I think they're, they're looking at the longer term implications of climate change and the fact that there's going to be less and less um, oil development and exploration, and they want to see some diversity in the industry. So mining is a, a perfect um, industry, as long as it's done responsibly in these remote areas, particularly given the um, uh, significant uh, opportunities that exist in, the, in, in Alaska in terms of the geological potential, which is vast. Yeah, vast. And uh, if the world is serious and the country is serious about electrification, uh, really, this project and the others that you're working on are really crucial. Yeah, you know, I think we agree uh, that um, the, the metals that we're producing are very tied into uh, climate change and tied into 
uh, green economy, uh, copper, zinc, very, very important. And we see lots of opportunities, particularly when we look at Portnite, the size and scale of that at some point in the future, once we get our arms around it, that that could also be developed in, in a reasonable time period. So we think those are very important metals. They're domestic sources of metals. These aren't metals that would be imported into the U.S. These are, you know, made in the USA metals. And uh, th that's also very important in terms of, you know, the supply of metals going forward and particularly these key metals. So just bring us up to date what's happening with the drill program. Understand uh, we've had weather issues and uh, and obviously hey, you can't control the weather. It's going to have an impact, but you're still moving ahead. Yeah, so there's been two uh, major impacts on the program. One is the weather and one is people, and I'll talk about both. So the original plan had been about 14,600 meters. Uh, with the vast majority of that 7,600 meters uh, focused on uh, the Arctic project and then uh, the remainder on regional targets in and around Arctic and then some uh, targets further afield. Um, so what's happened with respect to the Arctic drilling is we've scaled some of that back. We've gotten the metallurgical samples that we wanted to get. We did some of the infill drilling that we wanted to do. So, so that's all very, very positive. All of those um, uh, metallurgical samples are being shipped to the lab for assessment. So all of the work that we wanted to do on the MET side has, has been accomplished. Um, the other thing that we were focused on in the uh, Amber Money District, or Arctic, excuse me, was uh, condemnation drilling. So we wanted to put a few drill holes into the area where the mine was going to be constructed to make sure that we're not building the mine on top of uh, um, uh, on, on top of an ore body. Uh, we delayed that till next year. So we'll do that condemnation drilling next year. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll deal with that then, uh, which is fine from a timeline perspective. And then some of the other regional targets, uh, we're, we're in the field doing that right now. So we're a bit behind schedule because of the weather. It's a helicopter supported drill program. And so the helicopter can't move the rigs and we can't build pads when you have um, low cloud cover. And that's been an impact during the last several months. So one of the things that we're doing is we're extending the drilling into September. So hopefully the weather will cooperate in September. We'll be able to catch up and make up some of the, the, the lost meters that we haven't drilled uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, but if not, uh, we'll, we'll figure out how it sort of plays into our drill program for next year and, and how we assess that. The other impact has really been on people. And as most of the listeners will recognize, um, it's hard to get people nowadays for some of these jobs. We're in a remote, remote community, and uh, I would say we're probably running 10% behind in terms of the people that we need to be able to do some of the work necessary. And it means that the people that we have on site are sometimes stretched. So we're concerned about safety. So we have to make sure people have adequate time off. And that sort of played into our ability or inability to complete the drilling that we had hoped to do uh, during uh, the period. But as I said, we're, we're, we're looking to see how much of that we can make up in, in September, possibly even into early October. So we're looking to extend that. And uh, we're excited about the drill results, which will be coming out in the fall. And we'll give everybody an indication of you know, what we've seen in Arctic in terms of an info drilling and then some of the regional targets and other targets we were looking at. Right. So uh, community outreach has also been a little bit hampered by the health concerns and the uh, course, uh, hey, we all know what's going on in the world, but uh, but you're moving ahead with that. Yeah, so Ambler Metals, which is the JV company, is very focused on community outreach and really getting out to the villages and talking about what we talked about earlier with respect to the road, highlighting how the road impacts the project, what the opportunities will be in terms of training and job employment in the district, and what it means to the communities as a whole. And um, they've systematically been looking at the villages uh, closely associated with the project and in and around the Ambler Mining District and set up times to go and visit and really have town hall type meetings. Uh, but with the, you know, COVID and sort of the variant and just the increase in um, infection rates, uh, it's hampered our ability to get into uh, the villages because in some cases, the villages have basically gone into a lockdown scenario so that visitors aren't uh, able to come into the villages. So that's uh, impacted our ability to get out there, but clearly, what we're looking to do is um, get in front of uh, the leaders in the communities. The communities, as I said earlier, listen 
to the questions that are coming from the Native uh, communities, um, highlight how we see the road uh, playing out, how it's more akin to uh, a Red Dog Road as opposed to Dalton Highway, and uh, answer any questions with respect to the impact on subsistent living, hunting, and fishing in the district. All right, so if I could sum it up then, pretty much it's moving ahead. As in any uh, project of this magnitude, there are going to be uh, unanticipated, unforeseen events, be they health, be they labor-related, uh, and, of course, weather. You can't control the weather as much as we'd like to be able to, but basically no major, major delays, and whatever whatever doesn't get done this year will go into next year, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of looking at it, Carrie. And that, I would say that that pretty much sums it up. I think the other focus has really been on engineering studies and engineering work with respect to the mine. So that's uh, pushing along quite nicely. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, kickstart uh, the formal permitting process. So the permitting documentation has been prepared. It's been reviewed. We've got uh, subject matter experts that are involved. Um, we're, we think we're ready to go with respect to that, but we're probably going to take a bit of more of a belts and suspenders type approach, and we're going to do uh, independent review of the uh, permit uh, preparedness, uh, which we uh, anticipate doing in the month of September, and that will put us in a position to um, uh, engage with uh, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers in terms of the permitting process for the mine uh, later in the fall. So that is how we're planning things. And once uh, you know, once that work is complete, it sort of puts us in a position to hopefully kickstart the permitting process, assuming that there's no uh, major issues that come out of any of the reviews that we're doing. So I, I would say that's very positive. Uh, that's an important part. It's you know, a 24 to 30 month process to do that. And then as far as mine optimization, uh, we are, are looking at uh, just the, the pit itself. We're looking at the steepness of the pit walls. We're looking at dilution. We're looking at the infrastructure that's needed and uh, those considerations. So there's a lot of work being done by Ambler Metals in terms of the uh, feasibility study that Trilogy had prepared and really upgrading that study to put ourselves in a position to advance the project quickly once uh, an investment decision is made. All right. Well, in a, a project this remote, it, the news flow can be difficult to, to keep up with. Uh, you know, it's not like uh, it's accessible to the public. Or they can keep an eye on what's going on. It's kind of, uh, right, it kind of happens as it happens, and then you do the releases, but uh, but you can never uh, get it out quick enough uh, for, for some people, but investors should be reassured that everything is moving ahead. There's no substantive delays, and... Uh, and it's just uh, part of the process. And this is a long, drawn-out process. But as long as it keeps moving ahead, then investors will be happy. Uh, you really want to find out. You want to stay up to date on what's happening with Trilogy Metals. Go over to TrilogyMetals.com, sign up for the notifications, and then you'll know as it happens, as it unfolds. Again, the uh, ticker on the New York Stock Exchange in the U.S., in Toronto, same symbol, TMQ. Tony, thanks so much for checking in with us. We appreciate the update, and we'll be talking to you again uh, when the drill results start to come out. That's great, Kerry. Thanks again for having us on the show, and uh, stay safe. Look forward to further updates on uh, what's happening in the Andaman District and Trilogy. Talk, talk to you very soon now. Financial Survival Network.